Hello, welcome back to another episode of the Church of Love podcast. This week we are joined by Maria and Mike from Disney Moonshine Big Band, um, who are releasing their brand new album City of Sin very soon, so we got them on to speak about that, um, amongst other things. Um, we still kind of fucked up the video quality on my end because of my shitty internet, but we're getting better, we're getting there, and uh, yeah, it's a really good episode, so I hope you enjoy it. Welcome to episode two of season two of the Church of Love podcast. My name is Will Father Funk. I'm joined by some very special guests. Go on, start introducing yourselves. We'll start with Aiden. Uh, I'm Aiden from Tremor Sound System. I'm also one half of Rua Tui. Uh, I'm Maria LaRue from the Dirty Moonshine Big Band. <laughs> <laughs> I am Michael Rack from the Spice Girls. <laughs> <laughs> How are you all doing? How's, um, how's quarantine treating you so far? I know it's a fucking cliche question to ask, but everyone's dealing with it differently. Yeah, it's tedious. <laughs> I actually I, don't mind it. Apart from the not gigging thing, that bit sucks. But otherwise, I quite like the, the extra sort of time to chill. Yeah, it's kind of been the same for me. It's like the first time I've been able to just like make music without having to think about like the gigs and making music for gigs and just like just being a bit more arty almost, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I hear that. Yeah, the gigs are, gigs are definitely a big, big, big missing thing. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, I think it's going to be harder when it it's going to be harder when it gets to summer and it's like this weekend should have been the weekend. Oh. You know what I mean? Like yeah. right, right now it's not too bad because it's nothing would nothing would have been happening, but when it's like shindig weekend, that's when it's going to start hurting, I think. Yeah, last, last month I kept getting um traffic alerts from my diary that kept for like the dates from the floor that we we had to pull kept being like you need to leave now to get to X <laughs> time. And I was like Fuck you! Yeah, I've had, to, I've had to delete all of my calendar shit because it's just yeah. stressful, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it looks a lot nicer when it's just empty. <laughs> <laughs> like, like my soul. <laughs> yeah. So um, I, I, I guess we should uh, just go get straight in there. Um, we've been asking, we've been trying to do a bit more of an interview vibe with this season because the first first season we were kind of just like just chatting bollocks with some friends, but trying to have a little bit more structure and ask people some more questions. And one of the main things we've been asking, which has always been quite interesting to find out, is like, how did we all meet? And I think, I think, I think me and you, Mike, met at the same time as, as you met Aiden on the, when you toured with Sarah and Logan, right? On the... Like, yeah, same, same tour, not same show. So yeah, I'm at, yeah, yeah I'm same at, tour. I'm at Aiden at uh, base, base Jump, was it? At Timbuktu? Yeah. Timbuktu, was that the venue? Timbuktu, yeah. God, that club was awful and... <laughs> I mean, it's yeah, sad yeah, that yeah. it's closed, but thank fuck it's closed. Jesus Christ. <laughs> and then, um, and Will, I met you at Hi-Fi in Leeds, didn't I? Yeah, yeah. yeah unless, we right. met, unless we met a beat herder before that, but I think, I'm pretty sure it was Hi-Fi, wasn't it? Yeah, I'm going to say it's Hi-Fi. Yeah, it's definitely Hi-Fi, because I, yeah, yeah, 100%. That's, that's definitely the one. Uh, so it was quite a big, even though um, at the time it probably didn't seem like much of a big tour or whatever, I think a lot, a lot, of, lot, lot came from that. A lot of connections were made. And, oh, huge, yeah. Massive. You know well, I mean, Sarah bloody met, met Cohen Sound and later got married to one of them. <laughs> yeah, isn't it? it's, I think it's interesting how sometimes the yeah, it's kind of like the smaller things like that and the and the, that make the more more important connections rather than the super big crazy gigs or whatever. You know what I mean? Oh, totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Made, yeah, one hundred percent. I know. Um, I know Logan made a whole bunch of cool contacts and stuff. And yeah, it was, yeah, it's just a, it was a really cool time. I'm trying to, I, I don't remember. I don't remember when I met Shiv because I, uh, when I met her, when I saw her play first time, I didn't actually meet her. I don't think. Yeah, so, I think I don't know. Maybe did was you meet it? Danny first? I met Danny, yeah, because we made Skip a Love. But I don't know if I met you. Surely it was before we had the first big band rehearsal. Or was I think. It I think. I think it was band rehearsal. I was just thinking about what? that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One of the total five band rehearsals we've ever had in our entire career. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I'd seen you lots, though. I'd seen you in um, Oxford City Centre doing all your circus stuff. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys, are you guys both from Oxford then? I didn't, I didn't know that. Yeah, I am. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I was living in Oxford at the time. Uh, sort of. Yeah, I was living in Oxford when we did the tour when I met you guys. And then... Yeah, you, that was when you were living with Furley, wasn't it? Yeah, the old dirty house. Did you ever see yeah. that house? No, I no, I wait, I I did. I came. I swear, I came to work. Yeah, because I came to the Purple Turtle. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> where, where Logan uh, Logan played downstairs, and like you and Furley did a set, and yeah, that was a mad night. 
Yeah. <laughs> well, it just, so just sounds greasy, greasy. The, the purple turtle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was uh it was it was one of those it was, well it's kinda of like two two, it's one of those underground sweaty tunnel venues, um I love like, it. versions. But uh Club Turtle was proper student y but in a grotty venue. So it quite yeah. it was, it'd be alright if it was like a metal club or a drum and bass night or something, but when they're playing like cheesy chart we didn't obviously play cheesy chart bangers, but when other nights were it was like oh <laughs> So do you want to maybe just tell us a little bit about how Dirty Moonshine started and your humble beginnings back in in Oxford, was it? Yeah, uh, well, technically Dirty started in Reading with me and Furley and we did a bunch of DJing for a few years and I formed the band when I was living in Oxford and Dirty Moonshine big band sort of. Okay, cool. I got, got the stature the DJ stuff never got. And uh, it was five, five years ago, was it shit? Was it five? Yeah, well, I Fucking feel like hell. I've been five years for ages though. Like, you know, when your grandparents stay the same age. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we've been five years old for a few long time. Yeah, it was, I, it was, I think it was five years and in, it, it'll be five years this month. No, when was Swing, when was swing Imaging meant to be? <laughs> yeah, start of May. That was swing Imaging, weekend. start of May. Yeah, so that would have been, oh wow, I didn't even think to do a shout out about that. Yeah, that was the five year <laughs> birthday for Dutty. We'll just uh, pretend it's today. Way, <laughs> <Hey>, happy birthday. <laughs> 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 um, and yeah, Dutty, Dutty Moonshine, big band is. I say 12, it's, there's actually 16 of us, but some are part-time, um, but 12 is sort of like the general number you kind of get on stage at once. Mm. Lots, of, lots of brass, drums, keys, vocals, DJ. Although actually we don't, do, we don't have a DJ anymore. Howler and Binge have upgraded to like hardware and stuff. That's they've, got cool. like a, they've got like an OPO type setup. Nice. Um, we, still, we still have a CDJ on backup for all <laughs> kinds <laughs> shit. Always, always. <laughs> always have a backup. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Always have um, a backup for the backup as well. <laughs> 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 that's my um, that's my boy less routine. If I have, if we need another backup. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, I guess yeah. that's probably a good good time to play some music. I mean, I'm sure there's might be some people listening who've not heard you guys before. So um, before we go cool. any deeper, that sort of shit. What, what would I start with? Maybe City of Sin, since it's the title track. Yeah, let's do City of Sin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, or should we do the? You got this is going out to quite a lot of Canadian people, isn't it? Yeah, man. Well, I got a few Canadian let's, followers. We got people let's, everywhere. Let's, let's we'll save the feature cast one for later. But then, yeah, because I know. Okay, well, let's start with City of Sin because the, right. al- the, the album's called City of Sin. That's right. Yeah, the title track City of Sin. So this is the title track from the Dirty Moonshine Big Band album City of Sin. City of Sin. <laughs> <laughs> Rhythm just isn't me 
I bring better than the rest, no test will still be better than the next No stress, tell me I'm not the MC who's bringing this much finesse I ain't got time to wait, if you can't step up to the plate then get out the gate If you ain't here to win, you don't belong in our city, I sin Some people gamble in the city, but not me Cause we don't have to gamble when we work to know that we'll succeed We've got you and we won't let you escape Think you have lost it, we can help you find your way Your toes just diving, don't be frightened I'm enlightened by inspiring winds Can attribute this to our almighty glamour city of sin We've got you and we won't let you escape Think you have lost it, we can help you find your way Come with us as it's time to begin Get him no custom to our surgery Nice. I have, to say, I have to say that track sounds so much harder on my headphones than my shitty monitors in my office. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the album should definitely be listened uh, listened to on um, on decent speakers. That's for sure. Yeah, right. those, those monitors suck. <laughs> but yeah, no, the track's great. Yeah, man, good vibes. In fact, it's funny you mentioned um, the OPO setup before. Actually, it does definitely had a bit of that kind of texture to it. I, I felt like kind of. Um, yeah, we just wanted to have a bit more of a, I don't know, just sort of upgrade everything with this album and just get a bit more, um, just get a bit, get a bit, bit uh, <laughs> live, <laughs> live band in the studio. <laughs> nice. But, uh, it's, it's good having Howl and Binge, you know, something more to do than just sort of, because when they were doing live, it was mostly just had to hit play on a track and it wasn't, it wasn't much to do, it was just a backing track. So mm. had a bit of a scratch, but it kind of just felt a bit like a useless job. Like, you know, most important, they're both, you know, one of the most, two of the most important people in the band with regards to off stage, on stage was sort of for them to do. So we thought we'd do uh, yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, it's, and, yeah. It's, not, it's always hard to work out the best way to kind of show that on stage, isn't it, sometimes? Because like you say, you kind of want, you don't want to have too much going wrong, but it's yeah, yeah, yeah. work because it's so integral. But it's also yeah. so integral that it kind of needs to be visual. It's like, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Kind of good balance, isn't it? And I'd love to get, I'd love to approach people like someone like Opio or Cohen Sound to do a remix of City of Sin. That'd be, that'd be oh, the yeah. one. Get, get, get an artist yeah, like that. I, I think they could do real good justice to that song. Yeah, totally, man. It's got, it's got quite a nice, um, there's a lot of space for, to be able to do other stuff with it, you know? Talking yeah. of Opio, did you see that show he did uh, in Australia? Did, I think it was this year or last year where he did it with a whole orchestra. <laughs> That, that was, was at Red Rocks. In yeah, Colorado. Red Rocks. So yeah. dope. Like, yeah, yeah, got a lot of time for that. <laughs> yeah, man. The, the full, like, that is like the biggest band you could ever get to do your set. Like, it's, Mate, I'm one, all over that. <laughs> one, one, one day you're going to have the Dirty Orchestra. <laughs> yeah, we are. We're already talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, had, I got the, um, I haven't told Maria Lavoux's not in the loop about this. I, I tend to keep most of the band out of the loop unless it's crunch time. But yeah, I've actually been sent all the light designing plans for it. Um, and we're going to have this whole set up with, with uh, different visors and stuff for string sections and yeah it's good nice <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. The, the dry ice when you come out <laughs> obviously it won't be the point otherwise <laughs> yeah. damn straight oh mate <laughs> so we, we were just saying before it was about it was five years ago now the band that you started the band right yeah 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 that's right it's fucking mad that's gone so quickly was it yeah that's <laughs> how and would you say it's been like your main focus since then i guess was it was was it kind of always the plan to have that as your main thing, or was it just kind of yeah. happened naturally, kind of thing? I I always knew that with the start of music, I was DJ. I knew there was a limit really to how far I could get um, using yeah. you know remixes and all that sort of vintage samples. And I always wanted to go live, and I knew that going live was the thing that would push me further, and it get you know gives me uh, gives us room to do I don't know just have our own sort of unique sound and branding with so many people putting in you know contributions to stuff. So excuse me, <clears throat> and. Uh, yeah, so yeah, the band was always the yeah, it was always the idea, and I think it's always been such a focus. And I think that it's yeah, it was kind of we owe our success to the band, really. It was, yeah, got it. Yeah, so I think I think it's like we were like we were saying before with um, electronic music. You know, kind of it's quite hard to give it a visual element sometimes, but I think it mm. really needs that 
for it to be taken to the next level. I mean, some of these guys that are like doing the live electronics are kind of almost doing less than DJs are, but just because it yeah. looks good, that's what gets them, you know, it doesn't yeah, make I've it more just make it more I've, exciting. I've seen a few live shows. I don't name anybody, but I've seen a few and I've gone, what is the point? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that stuff is all pre-locked and quantized. I'm not even sure you're going to hit that button wrong, to be honest. I think yeah. that would just... That's I've, all definitely, I've definitely seen some people where it's like they're using Ableton, but if you look at the screen, it's arrangement view, so it's the whole set. It's oh, just tracks. Wow. It's like, that's what not using that? Ableton. What's the point? Like, I mean, I think, oh. you can, I think you can make it so it triggers different panels for when he goes to each track so you can play different parts of it but it's still a bit like I don't, I'm sorry mate if you've got I feel like a live got... set needs to be able to change at any minute if you want it to otherwise yeah, it's need... not really a live set you know what I mean you, yeah 100% yeah that's a that is that's a bit dirty <laughs> Anyway, so let's, to, not, let's not shit talk anyone. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> do, you want to, um, do you want to tell us a bit about the sort of the concept and the storyline and all that kind of business? Because that's something that you did in the first album as well. Is that right? Yeah. Do you want to take, do you want to take this one, Maria? Yeah. So um, with the with the last album, um, we were kind of sort of these bootlegger, rum runners, like uh, just sort of starting out and building our way to sort of notoriety, infamy. Um, and then so we're this album city of sin we've incorporated an ep that we didn't manage to get around to making and releasing at the time just because of so much other stuff going on and bits and bobs um of us kind of being at the top of our game you know the last album we were most wanted and now this is about we've created that city of sin and you know now we've kind of got enemies with the law and we are getting caught and getting arrested and um it's going a bit tits up in that respect um so that's kind of the storyline of uh of city of sin so like the answer is um is it bail it's bail yeah. right like jail yeah. bail yeah jail bail uh in in portuguese um and we've got the arrest on there and locked up um yeah so it's kind of about our demise i guess in that respect. Fall from grace. So how, yeah. Yeah. how was it kind of, um, what was your approach to writing? Was it like, did you have like a framework for the storyline or did you kind of just have like a vague idea or, you know, in terms of like the lyrics and this, the sort of the structure of the storyline, you know? This, yes. Uh, go on, sorry, go on. Yeah. You take it. Yeah, go you on. take it. You want to start with the tunes and then I'll go on to the lyrics. Well, yeah, because yeah, because some of the so some tunes were just like they're half tunes lying around that people have made, but we didn't know what to do with them and stuff. They were just like general dirty ideas, and so they were kind of lying around anyway. And then I sort of I wrote a story, so I wrote the narrative of the album, which told you know the, the fantasy tale of these mobsters and you know the law and stuff like that. And then once I sort of come up with the narrative, we sort of started arranging tracks in a certain order, and then passed it over to people like uh, Maria Lavu, Hype Man Sage, Shanina, and they started like they they would pad the story out because I'd be like, right, this song is all about being arrested you're talking as if you're the coppers and you're being you know ruthless and a shoot first ask questions later type thing and and then cool. those two those guys would then run around well doing what they do best nice yeah so it might always sounds as like a concept like i guess, I guess like a bit of a storyboard and then um a mess of notes <laughs> yeah yeah i'm being quite kind there. <laughs> <laughs> a storyboard. uh um yeah and just things. They'll sometimes be like little bits that he like really wants us to include. And sometimes they'll, you know, it'll be total freedom. Um, and yeah, just go from there really. Me and me and Ben, uh, me and Hype Man Sage actually did a lot of our writing because he lives in London. So a lot of the time when we were writing lyrics, we'd do it over like Skype or Facebook Messenger. Like, That's so cool. we're, we were way ahead of the Corona cars. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, I've always I always felt like that's that's um, one of my best tracks come out is when you've kind of got a bit of a preconceived idea, like off often more in terms of a concept than an actual like melody or riff. Just be like I'm gonna make a tune that's I don't know. Like last night I made like a rave meets dubstep track, and just having that kind of general idea just gives you a bit more direction, you know, makes it a lot easier to, have to be creative instead of just being like I'm gonna write a song. And then you just kind of like, <laughs> you, know, you don't really get anywhere. <laughs> um, to talk about dubstep tunes, I, I heard some of your thing you were releasing on 19K. Congratulations, by the way. That's sick. Oh, thank you. Um, I heard, I was really impressed by that. I was, it's, not it's, not, it's not something like I'd heard you do before sort of thing, like the style. 
I'd heard you play around dubstep before. I mean, quite, you used to live with me. <laughs> I mean, I've yeah. heard all the stuff you're working on. <laughs> um, and uh, I was really, yeah, I was really, really impressed by what you're going to be releasing on Dirt Monkey. I look forward to hearing the whole album and stuff. But yeah, that dubstep thing, I was like, that's what I'm talking about, Will. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, thanks, man. No, I definitely feel like I've, something's clicked a bit with that. I've, it's been nice. Like you were saying about just, just trying to level up and try out new things. It's been nice to, I think a lot, like I said before, a lot, that, a lot that's come from being in lockdown and not thinking about having to fit a track into my set. I'm just like, I'm just going to make some fun shit. And then yeah, that's, yeah. that's come out with way more exciting results than, you know, having to fit something into a set that I've, that I've been doing the same kind of thing for years, you know. We've actually um, written pretty much nothing <laughs> in lockdown. We've, uh, we've only, been, it's only the last week we've actually sort of picked up the, the writing thing again and started getting on it. Um, it's been, I, I think we were so knackered from City of Sin because we spent six to eight intensive months writing it, getting it finished in a, in a rapid deadline and stuff. Um, that, and then with the tour, once the tour was pulled and lockdown was enforced, I think we all just went, fuck this <laughs> Put yeah. feet up six weeks <laughs> yeah, I, was, I was gonna say that like uh, am, am, am i right in saying that the, yeah, the whole album came together really really quickly was that was that like a, a self-imposed deadline or was that was that from working with universal do you want to tell us a bit about that yeah so we had a uh, i mean we, we, we we've always, we always sort of like a year or two ahead two years plan we've got like a plan of what we're doing and so i knew roughly what i was gonna do I, you know chat to adam our agent and stuff about tying in this time getting an album out this time to get release and i was thinking you know what because of the previous results then all the main stage shows are doing we can probably hit the charts and we excuse me and we um and so we had a rough timeline and then universal popped up out of nowhere we never planned to get signed to a major label until the third album and they just came up they discovered us at glastonbury and then approached us in the autumn of 2019 and said hey you know we want to sign you and i was like well that's amazing it's also a massive pain in the ass because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you're going to mess with our timeline. And I said, one of the conditions is we have to fit this timeline. And they said, yeah, we can do that. And what I didn't factor in is all the legal stuff taking so long. And there was this horrible yeah. limbo point where we were negotiating backs and forwards where I was like, I kind of put a, I put a little bit of um, a stall on um, sort of, you know, carrying and writing and finishing because we needed, we needed money. We needed an advance from a label to carry on. So I sort of yeah, put totally. it all on pause. And once we sorted out the legalities and stuff and then got our advance, it was all then just go, 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 guns blazing for... Yeah, I mean, totally. how quick, how quick, how, because we were working on ideas for like, but you know, a year or so and a year and a half, like, like Maria said earlier, we had a whole EP sat aside that we never used in the end. So we kind of had bits and bobs lying around, but assembling it, we did in, Maria, how quick did we do it? I, I thought it was like three months. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think three months we were, yeah, yeah. If you, if we in start terms of like the recording schedule, I think from like when we got the advance to when we were like, okay, this is when we have to have it finished. Was it three months or? Not quite. No, the advance actually arrived a little bit later. But what it, it was basically secured. We just hadn't signed. We hadn't done the official champagne popping signing bit. <laughs> so we That's still the most part. The big yeah. check. <laughs> but, 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 <laughs> the giant but, check. <laughs> but once, once I knew that, once I knew that was in the bag, and we were good, and we were cushy, and we then we then got a lot of stuff on credit, like um, recording studios, and said, "Hey, can, you know, we've got this in the bag. We haven't signed the paperwork yet, but we've all agreed the terms." And um, and then yeah, so we had we did start recording in December, I think. We didn't get the money till like January, but we had to finish it by mid-February. I think we ended up finishing it end of February. But I think all the editing is what takes so long. Poor Binge, our studio engineer. God damn, that, that boy had to put some work in trying to edit all the recordings. Yeah. That's what I find the most kind of um, time-consuming as well, and almost the, kind of the least fun part. It's like you, know, you can be all creative when you write in and record it, and then when you got, when you got to sit there and like comp takes and like oh cut. mate. <laughs> Long, so, uh, the reason this album I've just made now has come together so fast because there's no features on it at all. <laughs> it's just all me. I mean, bar, bar that collab. Yeah, um, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, hey, but we, should, we should probably have some more music, shouldn't we? Yeah, yeah let's do it. What was it? What was the other one? Fia fiance, is that right? Am I saying that right? Yeah, fiance. <laughs> yeah, not fian not, yeah, British people say fianca for some reason. But yeah, fiance. Chicken, chicken ticker. <laughs> <laughs> So what, what, what was the story about this one? Do you want to catch us up on that and then we'll play it? Uh, Maria? Yeah, so this one, um, so as I said earlier, the answer is, is uh, bail, like jail bail in Portuguese. So this is about um, us getting caught and then getting out on bail and the big party that we're going to have before we get locked away, basically. Sweet. Boom. Love it. Ganhei a fiança, hoje é noite de bonança Propaga a esperança com momentos de criança O amanhã não importa, a festa é aqui Com malta janota e barões de Cali Ali, aqui, assim, para ti, para mim ah, Sem cliques, tudo misturado Whisky e vinho, fé no poço sagrado É dança, fuma em todo lado Corpo seduzido por baseado Sem cliques, tudo misturado Whisky e vinho, fé no poço sagrado É dança, fuma em todo lado Corpo seduzido por baseado Who's this? We 
Every time there's no time for this I ain't got much left so I'm going to live It's my night till freedom is eaten away Locked out in a cage But this one even in that I'm sent a stage move out of my way I went from public and on me number one to getting done What a shame but I got the answer Fianza definitely see your love of uh, carnival music shining through there mike oh man i love it i love it uh, shout, <laughs> out to, <coughs> shout out to shanini on that one the portuguese yeah. vocalist yeah I killed that nice yeah that was really good man. i love all the all the perks sounds very very fresh yeah yeah cool thanks dude appreciate so that do you want to tell us a little bit more about your um top 40 chart business <laughs> God. Yeah. yeah the big goal the big uh, <laughs> fuck you uh to the pop stars <laughs> so yeah, so we had, you know, we lined up, like I said earlier, we planned everything a year or two in advance. We lined up lots of chips, lots of favours, lots of ideas, got ourselves a massive 20-day tour, got an amazing album, got Universal signing, got everything lined up. And then the motherfucking coronavirus. <laughs> 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 and the shit hit Standard. the fan. <laughs> oh, mate, I, fu- I bawled my eyes out for two days like, over this because we've had so many things lined up and we worked so hard for like, yeah, six or eight months suddenly and all the recording and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. And then, uh, and then, yeah, just the bloody, uh, yeah, just, we're, we're trying to get top 40. And we're all, I think we're on track. Universal seem quietly optimistic. I'm quietly pessimistic. <laughs> uh, but, but we, uh, yeah, we're just we're trying to get top 40 here in the UK. And we need to sell a, a shit ton of a shit ton of albums in advance. So anybody watching this, do pre-order the album, by the way. Dirty Moon yeah, yeah. We'll, yeah. We'll, we'll put the link in the, in the, the, the description. So definitely go pre-order the album. Um, nice. Fuck yeah. We, but yeah, it's just uh, everything's just become a logistical headache, and yeah, there's a lack of resources. And the 20 day tour was supposed to promote it. You know, they could perform in front of like nine thousand people. And now we've got like, oh, <laughs> we've got bloody live streams on Facebook in front of hundred. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so yeah, it's, very, uh, it's quite hard to to sort of stand out in this sea of live streams, and that's kind of why I've been 
holding off for a bit. I really want to make sure it's like high production or at least as good as I can make it before I kind of just jump into this sea of shit. I mean, and also it's like, it just kind of, um, I don't know, it almost devalues yourself a little bit too, doesn't it? Like, like you say, when you go from your big live production to like, you don't want to have that, you can't have that same name over you in your bedroom playing some beats, you know, it's just not, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, not it's how really, it's going to be. It's really hard. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's just... Oh, it was a nightmare just to try to get my live streams up and running in the first place. Cause, uh, oh, mate, tell me about it. Because, because I just I couldn't get the kit I needed, and anything I needed was sold out. And I just, yeah, I was like, I was like, if I was trying to do this in, not in lockdown, I'd be like, cool, I'll go set up in a studio, I'll have all the production, I'll get some lights, I'll get some whatever, it'd be amazing. But now I've got fucking my shitty bedside lamp and a set of CDJs on a kitchen counter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of nice in a way that everyone's in a similar boat, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, everyone gets, everyone knows, yeah, yeah. But I've spent, yeah, I've already spent like fucking hundreds of pounds getting all this shit stuff for this live stream. I haven't even fucking done one yet. <laughs> Lockdown can be over, mate. Come on. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, you, didn't you just put out a music video recently? We've done four this year. Done four. The recent one we did was a song, I don't think I gave it to you guys to play. We did, uh, we did Tommy and Loretta, which cool. is a, it's like a, you know, Eminem's song Stan, the big story type um, yeah, song. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Maria Labu did a whole lovely noir jazz piece thing, and we did a we did an, an all animated Art Deco music video. And that was really cool. Yeah, I'm really yeah, glad the, that animation was is, the animation is really sick. Like, it's oh, yeah, awesome. I love it. That was Twitchy Pixel on that. But I'm really glad actually it was an animated video because lockdown happened and the video could still get all the editing and stuff could still be done. It, we, we didn't need to go film it. I was like, <laughs> if we still had to try and film a music video, the last one in lockdown, that'd have been a nightmare. But thankfully. Uh, yeah, it's animated. Yeah. But yeah, there was one for Fianza, one we just played that was filmed in the abandoned courts in Bristol. Um, you know, where they brought the airsoft stuff. Yeah, uh, the yeah. Island, oh, nice. yeah, yeah. And then we did Big Band Fan was a was a was a piss up in a in a limo with a bunch of fans around Bristol, lots of clubs. That was an expensive bar, but bar uh, <laughs> <laughs> And then, um, what was the other music video we did? Uh, did, didn't you have one planned and then you did? Didn't you do a lockdown one? Oh, uh, uh, the, uh, yeah, in the lockdown. Arrest, yeah, we did the arrest and lockdown, which was just like a Zoom style edit thing. Uh, oh, we did Fever, Fever, of course we did. Plenty, that's the video. Uh, <laughs> we did, uh, we did one. Uh, yeah, Fever was just a big uh, song. Have you with the the like Hollywood style mirror yeah, thing that's right. and the girls? Yeah, was, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah bloody yeah, hell, this year's gone fast. Yeah. Yeah, 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 it feels like such a blur already, man. Yeah, Pretty crazy. Much. Sweet. Well, um, I think it might be time for the news, you know? The <laughs> news? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. God, I know. I watched the last one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay, news. <laughs> Man hiding from police breaks cover with fart. <laughs> Brian, <laughs> Brian May hospitalised after injured, injuring buttocks in an over-enthusiastic gardening incident. <laughs> This one's probably my favourite. Kid Rock subpoenaed to produce glass dildo as evidence in, in, in an insane clown posse lawsuit. <laughs> you ever heard? This one's quite an old one, but I had to squeeze it in there. Children evacuated from the swimming pool after prosthetic leg mistaken for paedophile. <laughs> what? <laughs> Trucker loses trailer of 38,000 pounds of marbles on Indiana Highway. <laughs> and finally... Male sex robots with unstoppable bionic penises are coming later this year. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> what? And that was the news. <laughs> oh, that should have never changed. <laughs> <laughs> unstoppable bionic penises is a good band name, actually. <laughs> I'm just going to make a note of that. <laughs> well, if the Dirty Mutual Big Band fails, so you're just gonna, you know, oh, <laughs> change it, 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 your mind. We, we, we already decided what we do if it fails. If it fails, it's gonna be Maria Labu and the Geriatrics. Right. <laughs> like it. yeah. So I was gonna tell a plan B. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what, what, what is the uh, next step for you guys? I mean, I suppose we, talk, we talked about the chart thing, and is it all just a bit up in the air in the same way? In the same way it's for everyone, or do you have some, no, got, some plan got, for how no, to go yeah. about it, or? Yeah, well, the, the normal plan's gone out the window slightly, but things have adapted, and we're, we're we've got loads of cool stuff lined up. I'm just going to careful how I what I say because there's some things I'm obviously not allowed to say. Yeah, uh, of the course. Uni Universal approached us about an album, which is exciting. I can't really say more than that, unfortunately, but um, I'm really looking forward to hearing more from that. Um, and then we've got we, we're going to actually do we're, gonna, we're not apart from this album that Universal wanted commissioners to make. 
we don't want to um uh, we want to do different EPs uh, and do different styles. We want to do something really jazzy, something you know, really sort of musicianship and sort cool. of show off the talent within the bands. I'd like to do. We also want to do like a dirty bassline and grime thing with lots of collaborating artists, lots of you know vocalists from like London and Manchester and stuff. Nice. Um, and then there's a whole bunch of songs that they've actually made it on the album that we'd like to still do stuff with. There was idea. Some were finished. Some are just ideas, and it'd be nice to pick them up. So we're gonna just we're gonna just sort of increase the output we've been doing rather than everyone waiting two years for an album we'll that's kind of what, what i'm thinking as well i mean i think part of me was like it's silly to waste like people want singles kind of thing it's silly to put so much out but then at the same time it's, it is good to have a really healthy spotify page that's just full of loads of awesome shit you know and people can listen to it all the time it doesn't i think it's more about just having a catalog isn't it and having lots of content I don't yeah. think you think you've got to kind of got to let go a bit of the idea of a track blowing up because it doesn't always happen like that anymore I think it's yeah, more totally. just about being a fucking boss and with loads of cool shit on the go, isn't it? And you, and also, you know, I've been interested to see what people react to the better if we're doing different styles. Um, like rather than having it all, you know, all the energies and different wide stuff going into an album, if we test different, refine more stuff in different areas, and we like, see what people react to more. Like I'm really excited about the jazzy EP and stuff. And I, you know, I'm interested to see whether the jazz world picks up people like Giles Peterson and stuff. Do they respect it? And mm. can we get that kind of recognition from you know um, Radio Six and Brownswood and stuff like that? So, uh, yeah, man. Yeah, it'd be interesting. So, so, so does that mean that a, a Universal pretty open to you doing whatever you want in terms of music? Yeah, totally. We've got carte blanche to do whatever we want. We're allowed to do anything and everything. We've got no um, in the Sweet. contract. We're not we're not expected to do another release. Like they would we don't contractually we could just do nothing for the rest of the term. Um, and nice. But <laughs> we but we're going to obviously. And uh, yeah, they love it. They just love our weird sounds. And it was quite cool with this album. Like this, we managed to convince them to sign this album without them even hearing it. And they were like, just, just do you. <laughs> nice. <laughs> just, just do you. Yeah. So it's kind of cool. Awesome. And um, where's Aiden gone? Is he still there? He's still there. Uh, right? Leora's camera just died. I'll be back in a second. Carry on. <laughs> All right, cool. We'll carry on then. Move, moves. <laughs> well, whilst, whilst you're faffing around, um, we always we, we always play a track from that's been sampled. Like, obviously, a lot of people don't seem... I mean, we, yeah, we, we both come from sample culture, you know, sampling old tracks, making them into bangers. And um, I, I always like to throw in, like, one of these great old samples that, you know, so the audience can um, appreciate where it comes from. And then, yeah, while Aiden's faffing around, we'll have Bird's Lament by Moondog, which was sampled in Get a Move On by Mr. Scruff. Oh, wicked. Cool. Wow. Asking for an intro, intro tune, isn't it? I've not heard this before. You guys should totally do it. It'd be a cool intro. such a vibe. Hey! <laughs> Cheers, Mum! Was Bird's Lament by Moon Dog, which is sampled by Mr. Scruff and Get a Move On, amongst many, many other tracks that he sampled for that tune. That, yeah, that's amazing, man. I, I didn't, I, obviously, it was obviously a sample. I never really thought where it come from. That was great. Yeah, man, there's quite, there's quite a few in there. I think, um, I think Koch actually tried to remake it once from all the original samples, but there's, there's still a few you couldn't track down. Mr. Scruff's fucking oh. 
something. Hey, I got, I got a DJ before him at uh, Boomtown. He was doing a massive seven, eight hour set or something. I was the only actor on the stage other than Mr. Scruff. Um, and I had to play on his setup, like on his D- DJ setup. And he sets everything up like a living room. And he uses a weird, like, rotary mixer and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, doesn't it? And I was hung over. I mean, so hung over. I was DJing with Danny at the time. And I had to ask him to go get a sick bag from the artist ladies in that bag. <laughs> and I was like, if I throw it in here, I can just literally throw myself off this stage. Um, <laughs> And it, I was so hungover, I kept pressing buttons wrong as well, because you know you're so used to your setup being where, you know, there's the normal layout, you just know that button's there, that button's there. That yeah. is not how he has a setup. Like, all the CDJs are all on one side, and the mixer's over yeah. here somewhere, and it's yeah. Like, but it's, it's like a kitchen, isn't it? Oh, mate, it's just, oh, yeah, 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 when you're not in your own kitchen trying to cook, you're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think Mr. Scruff's actually, um, actually my favourite DJ, Mr. Scruff. I've, I think, I've, I mean, it's a hard question to answer, but just in terms of, like, Every time I see him play, he just plays such a variety of stuff, and it, it I, I, I can, pl- I can watch him for seven hours, and I don't get bored, and I, and I know like two tracks. Like, how the fuck he manages to do that every time <laughs> yeah. on yeah, a yeah. physical, on a physical medium as well. That's well, a lot of owning records, like. Oh uh, yeah, can... mad. So bands worth of records he carts with him everywhere for every gig. So, uh, Aiden, I believe you have a question for us. Yeah, so um, uh, something that we didn't do on uh, the last episode of... Uh, You're very organised, you two. I'm really surprised how organised you are on this. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, there was barely any organising for this. It was just like a scrawl of notes on a Google Docs document. <laughs> but one thing that... We're trying to do better, right? Yeah, we're, trying, we're getting there. But no, I'm, you... I, was, I wasn't being sarcastic, mate. I'm really, I'm really genuinely thinking like... This is, you're really getting it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so one thing that we, uh, we did quite a lot on uh, several of the episodes of uh, last season of the podcast was we always had a question, a silly question for our guests. Now, this question, uh, I want both of you to answer this individually. Uh, Mike, you can go first. Right, Mike, if you were the last person on the earth, there was no other people, no other humans left, what vegetable would you fuck and why? <laughs> right, yeah, that is a weird question. A really big butternut squash. It's got the sort of density, you know what I mean? You've got the, you've got the legs to it at the bottom <laughs> bell end, on the bell end of it. <laughs> you can sort of carve out a hole and, you know, you can get... <laughs> I think that's going to give you the closest thing. It might be a bit like, you know, <laughs> fucking a zombie, but... <laughs> that was a fantastic answer. <laughs> Great answer. Yeah. Uh, Maria, what's your answer to this question? This ridiculous question. I think, I mean, is it a bit to go for a cucumber? Oh, well, I, I, guess, I guess you have the easier options, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're not used to this question. A courgette, but I mean, that's basically just another sort of cucumber, right? Yeah, they're a bit hairy, <laughs> aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, and they're, they're, they're more smushable, which isn't yeah, really... That's true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it got weird. I, I take back everything I said about you being organised. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, I, don't, I don't really know where I go with that. Maybe a, maybe a bell pepper, just because they're sexy. <laughs> I think that's got a sting down your, down your, yeah. down your thing, down your pee hole. Yeah, you get, you, get, you get seeds in there or something. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ! <laughs> What about, what about you, Aiden? Uh, I'd go for a skinny button at squash because you can carve out one end and give yourself a little excitement on the other end. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, that's, that's a great, great, great question, Larry. <laughs> Will, you better, Will, you've got to answer it now as well, mate. Oh, oh, you I, said just, bell, I just said oh, bell pepper. Yeah, yeah. You said bell pepper, question. yeah, yeah. A nice shiny red one. <laughs> Looking them out in the supermarket, finding the right one. <laughs> Remind me never to go vegetable shopping with you. Well, yeah. <laughs> or you, Aiden. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, should, we should probably like, start we'll... wrapping, up, wrapping up pretty soon. Did you, you, want, did you want to play the uh, feature cast remix of Gangsters? Is that, was that a thing? Well, if we've only got one more song, I, th- I said I thought, why don't we treat people to something? Okay. If we've only got the one, one song, because uh, there's actually well, a song that... We've still got time for a couple couple more. I mean, we've we've done about right. sort of forty minutes at the moment, so you know we we can we can we can play treat treat them first, and then we'll we'll have okay. a bit more chat, and then uh, yeah. and then we'll squeeze some more in. Okay. Well, um, <clears throat> this next song's uh, it's a song that we didn't make it on the album. It got it was so far we finished it so much that it was mastered and everything. It was ready to go. We had the track, we had the artwork done, um, and then because it's a remix of a song by uh, Le Chevelle on Island Records, we at the last like forty eight hours before. Uh, 
before we needed the deadline, Island Records co- come back with some something we, we uh, like a, a condition we were really keen on doing. Um, and so we ended up pulling the track at the last minute, and it was really frustrating. So we got this amazing song called Cafe Patron that no one could hear. <laughs> um, so maybe we'll maybe we'll arrange something with Island Records down the line and stuff, but. For now, it's uh, you can only hear it. Well, no one's heard it, so I'm giving you an exclusive listen. So <laughs> enjoy. <laughs> Let's have it. Let's smash it on. Stumbling back to the bar. Who's loving it? Who's cracking on? Who's smashed? Who's drunk again? This wave turned upside down on its head. Pocket check. Not too sure where my wallet's at. It's my round. 15 shots. Line them up. No salt. No lime. Just line them up. Top form. All cylinders. Firing plus. I've done just been paid. And the night is young. Yes, hello, Mr. Barman. How'd you do? Pull right to the top. You know how you do. I've never met a barman. as sound as you. So you can keep a change, mate. That plan's for you. I don't want a house. Keep reaching, bruv. 15 of your finest tequilas. Cause the wave is jokes. So I want you. that one live it sounds familiar I don't know if I've yeah yeah <clears throat> yeah yeah okay that makes sense yeah i was just just kind of um just made me realize how much i'm gonna miss fucking seeing you guys this summer no oh, thanks out. mate yeah oh, it always makes that. me think of beat beat herder your, your music <laughs> yeah man i love that festival so much yeah man Fuck, yeah, it's, 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 it's gonna be weird not uh driving the the half around to a multiple festivals this summer for chesy to come and uh Jump on a couple of tracks as well. <laughs> the, the most cumbersome instrument known to mankind. Know, yeah. that, that thing is such a bitch to transport. <laughs> Holy fuck! Yeah, I, I can't imagine. I can't imagine what it's like tuning the fucker. Yeah, like she spends like an hour before each set tuning it, and it has to be like tuned, and then it has to be left there, and then she has to retune it to make sure it's still in tune, and like it has to be perfectly silent. Like Jesus. Well, we, 
Yeah, yeah. You have to. Yeah, so we have it signed to tune. Um, but we we recently, the last sort of like few months, set up a system where you can tune. We we, we acoustics. We had to uh, wire up um, using clip on uh, not clip on what they called uh, contact mics, the things you mic mm. on the piano with. But we then worked out where we could do a system where we could plug a tuner in, so you could tune it in headphones and stuff, not have to worry about. And making the crowd go silent. The first time we played Beat Herder with a band, we actually made the whole crowd be silent. Yeah, I, I was there. <laughs> <laughs> trying, to shut, trying to shut up 5,000 people. Like, it was so funny to watch. <laughs> it, just, it, it just turned into like a school, you know, we turned to be quiet and it was like, shh, 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 And what makes it worse is like everyone's like shouting to the next person over, shut up! <laughs> and they're like, they told you to be quiet! And it's like, you're making it worse, shut up, mate. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, I've actually got a uh, another uh, exclusive dub plate banger for you guys. <laughs> what were your two? This is uh, we've we're all, we've, we've, we've we've done an epic quest to find every Mr. Happy bootleg we could ever find. Yeah, like oh, literally, God. like wow. everything that you, everything that's ever. It doesn't matter where it's been created in the world. We want to find all the best Mr. Happy dub plates. Like, this one, I actually, actually found in Aldi when I was I was backed into a corner when I was in the bread aisle trying to social distance myself from everybody in there. <laughs> And uh, yeah, so I, found, I came across this another white label called uh, Happy Elliot. Do you guys want to hear it? Sorry, Audi is in the supermarket. <laughs> yeah. Well, of course. Of course you found <laughs> it. <there. laughs> Mississippi putting it down. I'm the hottest round. I told y'all mother, y'all can't stop me now. Listen to me now. I'm lasting 20 rounds. And if you want me, then come on, get me now. Is you with me now? Then biggie, biggie bounce. I know you dig the way I sw sw switch my style. <laughs> Oh wow, what a find. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> <laughs> well, Wait, well, we, should, we, should, uh, we should definitely start wrapping up soon because my husband's got a class starting soon. So my internet's about to go down the pan. But yeah. um, is there anything you want you guys want to kind of plug or anything you got coming up? I guess apart from the uh, pre-ordering the album, which we'll put a link in the description. Is there anything else you guys want to hype about? We're um after this tonight. We're filming a, a, a Moonshine Big Band does Mastermind. Um, oh really? Which I think it's going to be out on Saturday, so people can come and see us. Not know anything about our specialist subjects. I think Mike has snuck in some sneaky, sneaky questions about the band as well. So, <laughs> nice. is, it, um, is this going to be like a live stream thing or? A... Uh, no, so we're filming it tonight, like on a Zoom chat, and then All we're right, going to film Saturday. Yeah, yeah, so th nice. this will this will this will come out next week. Which so when this comes out, your uh, mastermind thing will have already come out. So yeah. if you oh, if you go. didn't catch it on Saturday, guys, go find <laughs> the Moonshine uh, Big Band Facebook page. It, it will be on the Facebook page, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Of yeah. Course. Sweet. Go catch it there because it was really funny. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> 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 Cool. Well, Love we normally it. normally end us end with the BBC Grandstand theme, but I think I think we should play it out with with the Featurecast remix of Gangsters since that's such an absolute banger. Hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big up Lee Featurecast. Yeah, Sweet. big up Lee. Yeah.
that Straight leave you blaze Your brain don't know the thing we saying Moon tries to think I come with that root case When the big bang back and I crack up a youth face Who's tested you with what weapon? Man's low, they come with true sections Bring death, it's called truth perception Say I am the true legend I step on stage, they should be ready guy Bring a horse, waste MC, send to Benny Vice Don't stand a chance, deep on the rhythm I'll move them like the sea That was the Beach Cast remix of Gangsters by Dirty Beach and Big Band. Mm-hmm. Fuck yeah. Well, thanks for coming on the show, guys. That was lots of fun. Yeah, cheers, mate. Much appreciated inviting us on. Then we can. Yeah, well, yeah, best, no, best, of, best of luck with all the album cool. release and all that. Sorry, sorry to interrupt you there. I didn't, I, I'm just saying <laughs> best of luck with the uh, album release and all that business. Thanks, man. Yeah, if anyone's watching, go buy it from DirtyMoonshine.com. It's re- released on the 29th of May, but we need all the pre-orders we can get. We got. Totally. Sweet. Well, yeah, I mean, I did say we would end on that, but I think it wouldn't really be uh, the Church Club podcast without ending with some pants down, grandstand. <laughs> yeah. I'm not I ain't taking my pants down. <laughs> Thanks for listening, everyone. This has been the Church of Love podcast. That was Dirty Bean Shine, Big Band. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Thanks for joining us on another great episode of the Church of Love podcast. Uh, Big ups to Mike and Maria again for joining us. And um, yeah, we'll see you next week. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Peace.